Welcome back to another Tabletop Review. Today we'll look at dry firing myths, facts, and solutions for the 22 rimfire and center fire firearms. From time to time I'll be asked why some firearms can be dry fired, yet others should not. The old rule of thumb has been that it's okay to dry fire center fire guns, but a 22 rimfire should never be dry fired. But as we'll see, in actual fact, neither is always true. Dry firing is pulling the trigger on an empty chamber. Dry firing drills can provide important firearm handling, skills development, and retention. Basically, dry firing drills go through all the motions of firing your gun, but without ammo. That could include loading, charging, drawing, stance, sighting, gripping, trigger pull, and securing the firearm. Dry firing is a highly recommended training routine, especially when range time is limited or ammunition is unavailable. Both conditions have affected many of us during this past year. Yet there are others who warn us against dry firing, that is, pulling the trigger on an empty chamber, about possible damage to the firing pin and other components. In this video, we'll explore the reasoning behind avoiding dry firing and why some firearms can be dry fired and others should not. Also, we'll look at the use of spent casings and snap caps or dummy rounds as a solution. For today's discussion, I have included a few firearms here to make some important points on the topic. First, let me assure you that I've already cleared all the firearms in this video. As you can see, they all have safety flags or line to verify that they're empty and safe. By the way, if you enjoy this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, so many of us have been warned that 22 rimfire firearms should never be dry fired, right? Well, perhaps. It's a good rule of thumb since in the design of the chamber of the rimfire rifles and pistols, when the chamber is empty, the striker hits the outside mouth of the chamber instead of the softer brass rim of the cartridge. At risk is the firing pin and over time peening of the barrel face. So the old advice of never dry firing a 22 rimfire firearm is probably good advice. However, with new modern 22 rimfire guns, many manufacturers have given more attention to the issue, uh, and they've done it by controlling the length of the firing pin so it won't hit the edge of the chamber when dry fired. The result is that the warning may not be as true as it used to be. Today, I'd say check your manual first. If you don't have a manual, you can usually find one for free online. Typically, the manufacturer will provide the answers you're looking for, and sometimes it can be a little surprising. So let's take a look at some popular firearms and see what we can find. We're going to start with Rimfire and we're going to start with the uh, classic Smith & Wesson Model 22A target pistol here. The advice of Smith & Wesson is no with regards to dry firing this Rimfire pistol. According to Smith & Wesson, the Model 22A should not be dry fired. The action is an older design so there's probably no surprise there. So we'll go ahead and label that one as a no. Next we have the modern Smith & Wesson M&P Compact 22. And again, the advice is no. Now that's a little surprising since this is an M&P, a newer design, and is supposed to be a trainer pistol. Now based off the 30-year-old Mark series action design is this popular Ruger Mark IV Tactical 22. And yes, it can be dry fired. However, it, according to Ruger, a snap cap is strongly recommended for anything more than an occasional dry fire practice. Okay, I don't know about you, but the word strongly recommend and no more than occasional raises my anxiety a little. So we'll kind of change that from an okay to a yes but. Another popular rimfire action design is the Browning Buckmark. Here we have the new Vision Plus 22. And according to Browning, yes, dry firing won't damage its newer firearms. Now that's an interesting statement. What Browning's blanket statement of dry firing not damaging newer guns would suggest is that improvements to its firearms due to materials and uh, construction practices over the last years have resulted in lighter and more robust firing firearms and components. But what we don't know is how new. So can I assume that my 10-year-old Buckmark Hunter is new enough? I assume yes, but I'm not certain. I mean, the Buckmark has only been around since 1985. 
but was preceded by the Challenger. So are all buck marks okay to dry fire and the challenges are not? I don't know for sure. I'll need to look into that. And here we have the Walter P22Q. Uh, it said that it's safe to dry fire with the safety on. Why? Because in Walter's design solution to dry firing, it's the inclusion of a hammer block safety, which allows for the expected exercise of safe dry firing. This is one reason this gun is considered a great choice as a trainer pistol. Of course, you have to remember to put the safety on. How about revolvers? Well, here's an older design Ruger Single 6 22. Uh, according to Ruger, yes, it's safe to dry fire. That makes sense because, as you see here, there's a transfer bar, not a pin on the hammer. But older 22 revolvers with firing pin hammers in general should probably not be dry fired. But older 22 revolvers with firing pin hammers in general should probably not be dry fired, although there are certainly many reports of revolvers that have been dry fired for decades without damage. Again, check with the manufacturer's recommendations. Now wrapping up the rimfire firearms, we have the classic Ruger 1022. And yes, according to Ruger, it's actually safe to dry fire. Now, although the action design may be classic, Ruger says dry firing the company's 1022 rifles will not damage them. In fact, that makes sense because since without the last round bolt hold open device you will inevitably dry fire on an empty chamber once you run out of ammo. Ruger's 1022 is an excellent example of the manufacturers controlling the length of the firing pin so it won't hit the edge of the chamber. And keep in mind that the 1022 action was developed back in 1964. So think about that. Once again, Ruger was brilliant in the design, engineering, and production of its firearm, which is why the 1022 has withstood the test of time. But there's something else to think about here. The Ruger 1022 is probably the most popular 22 rifle action ever made, with thousands of us learning to shoot with the 1022, and we were sternly warned to never dry fire a 22 firearm. Now just think about it all of us who were in fear of damaging our 1022 by dry firing when it was absolute nonsense. Wasn't that a shame? Okay, so what about centerfire firearms? Are they all right to uh, dry fire? Well, usually. But the problem with some centerfire designs is the firing pin travels too far when dropped on an empty chamber. That means in some semi-automatic firearms the firing pin is only stopped when it hits the end of the firing pin channel. The firing pins on older revolvers and some older pistols can actually be quite brittle and dry firing could lead to firing pin damage. Some notorious examples of center fire firearms that should never be dry fired are the 9mm CZ-52 pistol and the Marlin uh, Model 336BL lever action rifle. And the same goes for hammerless and double barrel shotguns. However, yes, most American and European center fired firearms are relatively safe to dry fire. Nonetheless, as I've said earlier, it's always good practice to check out what the manufacturer says. So, how about the Kimber Micro 9? Yes, Kimber says it's safe to dry fire at center fire pistols. Here's a surprising example, a Beretta 92FS 9mm. Thousands of military personnel have trained with the Beretta M9, the military version, using dry fire uh, as part of the training, but according to reports, repeated dry firing can lead to firing pin breakage. So according to Beretta, extensive dry firing is not recommended. So is that a yes or a no? I guess it's a yes, but uh, in moderation. My son, who is military, says indeed, although dry firing was part of this training with the Beretta M9, it was not extensive. And how about the popular with law enforcement SIG P239? Again, yes, but like Beretta, SIG does not recommend extensive dry firing. And believe it or not, the same goes for Glocks, except the Glock Mosquito 22, of course, for which dry firing is not recommended at all. Now, it's not surprising that a review of the internet on the subject of dry firing center fire firearms usually includes that there are no risks to dry firing modern center fire guns 
and I would tend to agree in general. However, I can also see where manufacturers might caution us on extensive dry firing, whatever your definition of extensive might be. So, uh, you can see how sometimes this can lead to inconsistent or vague comments from manufacturers. And here's an interesting example, the very popular Ruger LCP-2-380. The early versions of the LCP-2's manual said, yes, dry firing was no problem, but today's LCP-2 manual does not address the issue, and Ruger's overall public position on dry firing at center-fired firearms is that occasional dry firing is okay, but they recommend the use of snap caps for practice. Wow. Did you know that? And how about the very popular Walther PPK? Nothing in the manual, but Walther forums suggest using snap caps if you're dry firing beyond basic function testing, even for the center fire version. As for revolvers, how about the, the Smith & Wesson Airway 38 Special Bodyguard 438, the J-frame revolver? Well, actually, Smith & Wesson says dry firing is fine. MMP revolvers and pistols are no problems except the Model 22, of course. But again, when you look at a little deeper into the issues, you'll find that gun manufacturers today are often suggesting the use of dummy rounds for extensive dry firing. How about rifles? My internet review on the topic revealed quite a few examples of warnings about dry firing older center fire rifles. I was surprised. But how about newer firearms like the popular Smith & Wesson M&P AR-15? And the answer is a straightforward yes. No problem from Smith & Wesson and dry fire away. And how about shotguns? Now we get a mixed bag of suggestions. Of course, older shotguns should not be dry fired and the recommendation from trapshooters.com is no for break action shotguns. I'll admit, I didn't know that. But in general, most modern shotguns are okay to dry fire. Unfortunately, the owner manuals, like on the Rock Island Armory VR80 Tactical Semi-Automatic Shotgun, doesn't address the issue. And how about pump action shotguns? How about the popular Mossberg 590? Under the Function Testing section of today's Mossberg 590 Shockwave Manual, page 20, it says to dry fire to test to see that it works after reassembly. However, it does not say it's okay to do so repeatedly. Still, forums on the 590 and the subject of dry firing suggest both yes and no. So, checking the manual is, is essential, but be prepared you may not find a definitive answer. Again, probably limited dry firing is fine, but to reduce your anxiety, I'd say just use a dummy round for extensive dry firing. Now one more item, something really different. We have a black powder ball and cap 36 caliber Colt 1831 Navy 7.5 inch revolver. The answer is absolutely no. I bet most people don't know that. Again, back to the brittle firing pin. Dry firing is not recommended, and good luck finding a dummy round for one of these. Okay, so it appears that the old adage that center fire firearms are okay to dry fire and rim fire firearms are not may no longer be adequate. It may be mostly true for center fire firearms, but it certainly fails to direct us for today's rim fire firearms. And saying all newer 22s are okay doesn't work either, and sometimes even the manufacturers are unclear or inconsistent on the subject of dry firing. And another thing, some would argue that you've invested too much in your firearm to run the risk. They'll point out that most modern firearms from their design were just not intended to be dry fired extensively. When the hammer falls or striker strikes, a firing pin hits something. Hitting a primer is one thing, the impact of hitting a channel, barrel face, or frame is not the same. There's no doubt that modern metallurgy has led to stronger steel and many manufacturers have tried to design solutions that virtually eliminate problems from dry firing. And aren't the forces involved when firing off a round higher than when we dry fire? Yeah, but still, they would argue, most firearms are basically designed to be fired, not dry fired, certainly not dry fired frequently. So why take the risk? To that point, I have some suggestions. 
given that dry firing is a solid training exercise, how can we dry fire without being concerned about damaging our firearm, whether it's a 22, a rim fire, or a center fire gun? Well, we could follow the advice of the manufacturers like Beretta, Ruger, SIG, and Glock, who basically suggest using snap caps or dummy rounds if extensive dry firing is done. I know what you're thinking, but those cost money. Is there an easier option? Yes. Beretta even said it in the manual for their model 92FS. Use a spent shell casing. Inserting a spent shell casing into the chamber provides the firing pin a safe surface for impact. There's no real cost involved and they're probably readily available. This solution works really well for center-fired firearms, especially revolvers. But it also works for rim-fired firearms as well. You're probably retrieving your brass as you prepare to leave the range, so just pop a few of the spent shells into your pocket or range bag. You never know when they could come in handy for dry firing exercise. In my opinion, comparing the cost of dummy rounds or snap caps to the cost of live ammo today, they're cheap. You get only one bang out of live ammo round, but a good center fire snap cap can last for thousands of trigger pulls. I value training and as such snap caps provide a way to safely simulate ammo and firearm handling. Beyond my own dry firing training, when I'm training someone new to firearms, I find snap caps or dummy rounds are essential. Snap caps are made of soft metals such as brass or aluminum or polymer. Center fire snap caps provide a rubber or spring loaded surface for the firing pin impact. They come in all sorts of calibers and run between $10 and $20 a pack. But because they can hold up under thousands of strikes, they can last for a very long time and they make a good training tool investment. And you don't have to worry about that even after thousands of trigger pulls you might be causing any damage to your firearm. Rimfire snap caps or dummy rounds provide a soft edge for the firing pin. Unfortunately metal 22 dummy rounds will distort quickly and you'll only get a few hits, maybe four or five, before they become unusable. The polymer 22 dummy rounds uh, will last a bit longer but they too will begin to distort and break during use. The good news is that the polymer 22 rounds are really cheap. Every time I purchase a firearm in a new caliber, I always pick up a pack of snap caps to practice with. They're relatively inexpensive and are great not only for dry firing, but also, unlike spent casings, can be an invaluable resource for practicing function drills. And I have friends who tell me they store their unloaded firearms with snap caps in the chamber so they can release the spring tension on the striker without dropping on an empty chamber. I don't think that's really necessary, but it can't hurt. Now before we end today's video, I'd like to remind you that if you haven't already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe down below. And thanks for watching. So to summarize, although generally true, it doesn't appear that we can blindly rely on the old adage that all rim-fire firearms should never be dry-fired or that all center-fired firearms are okay to dry-fire. Usually, if it's a modern firearm, occasional dry-firing won't probably hurt anything. However, you should always consult with and follow the manufacturer's recommendations through the gun's manual or the manufacturer's website. And if you're not certain about the answer or if you have doubts, well, just use a spent shell casing, or better yet, invest in dummy or snap cap rounds and save yourself the anxiety, especially if you intend to do extensive dry firing. Problem solved. Any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.